Hey folks, so Bodacity here. Um, just doing something new here. A uh, user asked me to create a video tutorial for Final Cut Pro X optical flow and all that stuff. He said that he thought that my slow motion via optical flow is one of the best that he could find online. So, uh, on YouTube at least. Um, and so I'll thank you to you, but so here it is. Uh, it's not the best. I've used many ideas from those that I have found before me, but I would like to just show you guys with a simple tutorial how to do these things. First of all, it depends on what camera you're using, but you're most likely going to have to change whatever sort of video that you uh, that your camera takes into the Apple ProRes 422 format. This is easily accomplished by starting with something um, uh, called an M MPEG stream clip. Uh, I'm a personal fan of this thing because it works like a charm. It is very easy to use, uh, not uh, at all difficult to import, export files, choose what you need, anything like that. Um, and it can s convert to pretty much any video type that I can possibly th think I would need. So you open up MPEG stream clip just so you guys know how to do this. Uh, click open files. I'll go to desktop. Uh, I'll just pull in slow motion test one. Even though I've already previously converted this one, I'll just show you how it works. You got in your video here. You can uh, scroll along here, watch the video. This one's only a couple seconds long, but this is just one of the ones I thought I would try with the video. Um, and you can set your in and out points by pressing I to press the in point of the video. And let's find a good out. And the out point would be right there. So out. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Um, you press O. That will get the end of the video there. Then you go up to File, Export to QuickTime. Uh, then you get a screen that can be kind of confusing and all that stuff. There's not many things that you have to change on here, which is really nice. Uh, it says Apple Motion JPEG A here. You want to go up till you see Apple ProRes 422. You just stick it with that normal there. Um, set your quality to 100%. Make sure it's at 100%. That can decrease the quality of your video, obviously, with that. Uh, I film with a GoPro HD Hero camera, so I don't usually like to take sound because that just pretty much... Uh, doesn't work for the audio at all just because of the casing and all that stuff but I won't get into that so I like to choose no sound uh, you can leave the frame size the same because it can usually uh, tell what the frame size is of your video um, and pretty much that's all you're gonna have to do for that you click make movie name it and put it where you want to so you take from there uh, I put them on the desktop and then I imported them into Final Cut Pro now, I created a thing called Quick Test. Let's delete these out of here so that you can see how to start with it. Um, now, there uh, are a couple of videos that you guys might have seen of mine. Uh, I'm going to do some with the skiing and some with the parkour just to show you guys how it works. Um, let's show you first kind of a uh, bad example for what we want. You see this clip here? We got a guy doing spinning uh, 360 Iron Cross. Pretty awesome. Uh, so we'll take it, grab it here place here and boom that's about how long I want the clip to be so I'll click E to append to the end of storyline zoom in a little bit here so we can see how close it needs to be and we see a point now with slow motion you have to be careful um, when there's a lot of change between each frame in your video uh, it will appear choppy and you'll get a weird distorted look to it um, so I want to show you how that can happen with a video like this because he's constantly moving in this one. Um, now you might see people who try and slow things down 50, 25, 10 percent of the speed that it normally is and that can work for certain things but um, for objects like this where you have like the poles uh, and the skis and everything like that th you'll get a weird flame uh, frame bending, uh, blending, wow I can't talk tonight um, effect that will ruin basically the look of your slow motion. So you want to hit a spot where he looks like he's not changing much. So I'm going to do right about here and press B to enter blade mode. B there and only go a couple frames forward, not too many because the more you do the more weird frame blending thing you'll get. So I only did about 5-10 frames there. So I'll take that and then you go over here to retime uh, and I'll slow it down to 10% just to see how much of how long that'll take there and then I'll take it and you want to make sure you do this part 
Um, you can do normal or frame blending for this, but then it looks really choppy because you see the frames and it just kind of looks disgusting. Uh, so most everything you want to use that is below 50% of normal speed, you want to use optical flow on. Now, uh, so optical flow, it has to analyze, which is a little bit annoying about Final Cut Pro, but for most short clips, it doesn't take that long. Like you see, it's already done. So we take this to slow motion, and you can see here already there are a couple frame blending things that you'll see. Now, the key to good slow motion is to slow it down a lot. Like, I mean a whole lot. Uh, to slow it down past 1%, maybe 2%, um, to get it to be really nice and clean looking. Uh, now, it'll have to analyze it like it is now to make it look the best possible that it can, but when it's this slow, there's less frames to go through and less time that it, and more time it takes to take between frames, so you can see a really nice slow effect on how it works. So then you go across this like this and you see that it's kind of doing a little bit of a frame blending so that's the problem here you get him he's turning so he's not looking like the same shape every time as he goes across a backdrop so he ends up having a little bit of a distorted look as he goes across the screen uh, so we got that in there and that looks pretty good so uh, I'm just gonna leave it like that for now So, you've seen how that works. Uh, I'm just going to put in another one that is a better example of what you want to do. I'm going to grab from my slow motion test 3 here. Now, this one w came on me really fast when I was trying to take some video and I wasn't quite ready for it, but it turned out beautifully uh, in my last video. So, I really want to use it again. You take your frame again and you want to look for the point where he doesn't look like he changes that much. So, right about here. I'm going to blade cut here. So B for blade again, B for blade again there. Slow this down a lot, because the cool part about right where here, where right in here where this is taken, is he really doesn't change that much, but you can definitely see movement. You take this again, do slow down to 10% just to get it so that you can see how long it is and easier to drag. Switch to optical flow, let it do the analyzing, which should only take a couple seconds, especially on the slower clips like this. And then, uh, oh, already did that. Then take this, drag it out. Drag it out a lot. Oh, looks like I already took it out to the max. Because it will have a max that it'll take it to eventually on this thing. Um, so remember, though, a key to slow motion that people will like is make sure that whatever you're doing with slow motion uh, is already in progress. Don't slow it down before it happens. Uh, like as if the skier was coming off the ramp or going through everything else. Make sure that you take it and make sure that it's in a good action sequence when you come to the point that you want to slow it down. And make sure you don't slow it down for too long, else people will lose interest in the slow motion. And also, all the frame blending and stuff will probably look pretty weird. That's what happens to a lot of people when they're trying to pour in soda into a glass and make a slow motion movie out of it. Is it it just moves too fast for the frame rate of the camera. I, for, I filmed with the GoPro at 60 frames per second, and it turns out pretty good if you do it right. So, uh, we got this here. Well, let's play through it and see what it looks like. A little bit of blurring, but, I mean, look at how crystal clean and beautiful that is. Really nice and flowing. Uh, so, the really important thing is to look where there's not much change in the background and in the person that is doing stuff. So uh, let's go to another thing here. I like this uh, last one here. Final. Uh, this is from my best of Sean thing. Um, I want to take this section right here, slow it down from here to there. All right. So E again to append to the end of storyline. We'll take it. Um, and. One problem with optical flow is anything that is around the main moving subject will be blurred. So if you take a look right here, and you see how there's trees right here by his feet, and um, other objects around him, those will be blurred as he does his backflip, 
and slowed down a whole lot. You want to make sure that the background behind the person is relatively clear so that it doesn't have a blurring effect on the background. If you looked at my Best of Sean video, I didn't. I had a couple points where the video wasn't that good. I didn't uh, do very good with that one. Um, I don't even know why I uploaded it, but um, anyway, the uh, like the bricks on the one guy when he uh, when he does a jump spin flip thing. I don't even know what to call it. Uh, he jumps, and then you can see um, a weird distortion around his legs because he's still moving pretty quickly. So he, you have to make sure that. Um, well, the blending and all that things causes like a weird cloud of distortion to follow his legs and stuff like that. It looks kind of gross and not very uh, aesthetically pleasing. So you want to make sure that you take this and like let's wait until he's into the blue sky there. So blade with B again, cut there, and cut till there. Um, so now of course he is moving a bit, so you will see some frame blending, but it will not be that big of an issue because it'll pretty much look awesome because he's still pretty much staying the same. Um, again, let it analyze. Still working on all the analyzing. Uh, and there we go. So we'll take it, drag that back out to 1 or 2% because 10% really doesn't look all that amazing. I mean, like, we have 7% right here. Uh, let it uh, go through this one more time so that we can see it clearly. Alright, we go through, yeah, that looks okay, which it actually does look pretty good, but the problem is, is it just isn't a cool slow motion, it goes by too fast, um, so that's why you want to slow it down, slow it down a whole lot, I'll again slow it, slow it, slow it, slow it, slow it down, I like to slow it down pretty much as far as I can possibly get it, uh, let's keep pulling that thing, this is one of those times where you might want to zoom out, but of course, I'm too lazy to take the time on that one. So, well, no, let's just do it anyway. Zoom it out. Oh. There we go. So, now we've hit the max. Uh, we'll let that do a quick render. Alright, so, it's just about done. There we go. So, let's see what it looks like here. Oh, yeah. So, if you look... You can see how the feet there and the head a little bit are getting a little bit of a blurring effect as it goes around the back side of the flip there. He's bringing it around, bringing his feet around, and the more and more he brings his feet around, the more he will start to lose uh, cohesiveness and you'll get some of that weird frame blending effect. Anyway, I hope this helped you guys a lot. Uh, I'll put the video here at the end of the video, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, make sure to subscribe, and uh, let me know if there are any other tutorials that you guys would like to see uh, from this video, uh, or others, or anything else in regards to Final Cut Pro. I'll see what I can do.